I'm wiping up my tears, mopping them up after an explosive season for me of Landscape Painter of the Year. Let's get started. Well, in keeping with the weird destinations for this year, we are now at Port Marion in Wales, which is some sort of fairy tale Italianate village of some kind. I guess England's version of Disneyland? I don't know. But this is where the three finalists are to compete for the title of Landscape Artist of the Year. So let's look at the first one up. This first one up is Stefano. And this was his piece from the uh, Dam on the Thames. He is a surrealist painter from Italy. And I don't know what this is. I mean, I talked about it in a previous video, but I wanted to get you a, a sense of reference of something else he did before entering this final. There, there are three finalists. Stefano was the first one up. Now, they were also given the um, task of creating a landscape of their choosing, and they could spend as much time as they wanted to on it. This is Stefano's. Yeah. Now, if you look really closely with magnifying glasses, there's Tyrannosaurus rexes, there are spiders, there are all kinds of creatures in the stuff at the bottom of the canvas. So that's Stefano's thing. So yay for him. I don't mind a Tyrannosaurus rex showing up in a painting. I'm so over Stefano that I'm going to show the two pieces that he did for the final together here. The one on the left is the one where he got to spend as much time as he wanted to. They call that a commission piece. And the one on the right is from the Italianate village that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And what all I can say about him is he's not a colorist. His thing is imagination and fantastical worlds of some kind. And, you know, for me, I'm a painter who paints not things necessarily, but paints the light. And there is no source of light in these paintings for me. And so for me, they are DOA dead on arrival. I'm not a Stefano fan. I'm sorry. And if you are, that's fine. Everybody, you know, art is subjective. Everybody should love what they love. But there are his two pieces. And spoiler alert, Stefano is not the winner. I didn't think Stefano would be the winner, but he is not the winner. But now you've seen some of his work and you can see that he participated. That's what we'll say. He participated. He got a medal for participation. All right, the next one up is Helen. I adore Helen uh, because she is a, a painter of the light. She knows how to use neutral. She knows how to infuse color into a composition. And she's not spending a lot of time on detail. She's getting right to the point. She's certainly a plain air painter, picking up the absolute essential things that you need from what's in front of you and applying them. Now here comes her commission piece, meaning she got to spend as much time as she wanted to on this piece. And I think it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. She's a colorist. You know, she's a colorist. Van Gogh was a colorist. Some people just really have an eye for not what the world looks like, but almost in a way what the enhancement of what the world would look like. And she does that. And she, everything is just harmonious harmonic, um, well-balanced, and sensitively done, and carefully observed. You get a sense of place here. That's what I want from a painting. I want a sense of place. That's what I want to put on my wall. Now let's take a look at her two pieces that she did. The one on the left is the commission that she got to spend as much time as she wanted to. The one on the right is from this uh, crazy Disneyland type of place called Port Marion in Wales. And her colors are they're just lovely. I mean, they're lovely, lovely colors. I don't know if this is a feminist thing or something. Maybe I just don't like really uh, aggressive male painting. And by aggressive, I mean dark and moody. I, mean, I, I tend to not like dark and moody. We get enough of that in our lives. So those are Helen's two pieces. And needless to say, Helen is not the winner. I never thought Helen could be the winner because her painting is too conventional by our contemporary standards. Next up, all right, next up is Finn. Finn. Oh, Finn. Finn has a very dark palette. His, uh, and he has a dark palette and a real attention to detail. And 
I think that's what they're looking for. I had him pegged as the winner the first time I saw one of his submission piece. And I'm going to show a submission piece again in a minute because the prize is a commission to paint a very dark, moody painting. And he shows up, this is his palette. Now, I think Helen could adopt a dark palette and just do a fantastic job. But, uh, but I don't know what the constraints of the program are. I don't know since they're commissioning it, this, this uh, piece that's going to be done with sailboats and dark moody seas, maybe they wanted to make sure that they didn't have egg on their face and they had somebody who they knew could uh, complete the task. This is Finn's piece from uh, the final that is of that very pastel looking village, his interpretation. He's probably a lovely, probably the sweetest man in the world, but boy, his paintings are dark and moody. <laughs> All right, so let's go on. And the winner is, dun, 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 the winner is, well, we can do hashtag Joe was right because I saw his first submission piece and it was this one. And I thought this guy's going to win because it looks like the type of painting that will fulfill the brief for the final commission. That is the prize. It's a $10,000 final commission. The only difference is Finn's will have boats. I've looked ahead to see what the finished piece is that Finn did, and um, it is underwhelming to say the least. But there it is. He is indeed the winner. And I have to say, there are many, this, this was just the strangest year for this, this particular program. One of the hosts left, just seemed to disappear after episode three and no one ever mentioned her. I thought, well, that's a little weird. You know, at least on the Great British Baking Show, they'll say, you know, Prue is under the weather. She won't be joining us today. We hope to see her soon. Here's Finn's piece from the, um, the dam on the Thames. Just wanted to see another piece by him. You get a sense of a Finn painting. You know, it's going to be dark. It's going to be gray. It's going to have good structure. Fairly good, you know, I was in good composition, but there's no sense of light. There's no sense of a source of light. And for me, that's the reason to paint. And it's missing. And the last thing that we'll look at is the piece that Finn did when he won his particular heat, which is this one, which is the sand and the pier. So that ends the program. I'm not going to cover the final commission because it's too depressing. Like I said at the, the very beginning, I'm, I had to mop up my tears because so many good painters were overlooked. I'm not sure that I can watch the program again. I say that all the time and then I always end up watching the program. But I think I'm going to switch over to a portrait, portrait painter of the year because I think that is uh, more organized. And um, I don't know, we'll try it out, right? If you're interested in that, let me know. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet. There's the final piece again. Ugh. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, math for value, mix for color. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.